very trite. Just like that. Just like that. Beautiful. Tears in her eyes. She says it's hay fever. Yeah, whatever you say, Tracy B. Taking it back to the beginning, can you tell me just the story of how you got into acting and how you ended up being cast as Tracy Beaker? Yeah, if I can remember that far back, because I'm so old now. I think it kind of started with my grandparents, weirdly. So I used to put on these really obnoxious shows in their living room, <laughs> and I used to drag my sister into them, and I think my grandparents used to actually hate watching them. So they basically said to my parents, maybe she should go to like a little drama club. Oh, or to something. get the shows out of there. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't want to watch <laughs> them anymore. So I basically went to just like a little part-time drama school and absolutely loved it. Uh, and then everything kind of just weirdly snowballed from there super quick. I got like randomly put up for a job and then I got it. So I was in a musical in the West End when I was like oh. seven, which is insane. And then, yeah, I just kept going up for auditions and I was just really lucky in getting them. And then the opportunity came to audition for Tracy Beaker. And I was a huge Jacqueline Wilson fan, had read all of her books. Oh, amazing. Apart from Tracy Beaker. <laughs> And had zero idea what it was about. So I borrowed my friend's copy and still didn't read it and just went in there and kind of just used my gut instinct, really. And um, I think it paid off. Wow, they um, must have liked you. Do you know what I mean? Because we're like, what, 21 years later? Mm. And I'm still Tracy Beaker. You're still Tracy Beaker. So <laughs> I'm still her. I know, you didn't have to read the book. You just I got the vibe. Did. I didn't wow. have to read the book. So I've, I've never read it. Even now? Even now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Don't, don't tell Dame Jacqueline, though. And do you remember what your first audition was like? Kind of. I remember not being that nervous because I don't think as a kid you really do get nervous, no. do you? Just, you're just not bothered and you've just got all this like energy. And yeah, I just went in and I was just myself and I read the script and everyone was really nice and complimentary. And then I kind of just came out and just almost instantly kind of forgot about it, really, and just sort of moved on with my life. But I got the phone call from Susan Tully, who was our first director, telling me that I got the part. And I was like... What? I could, I could be on TV. Um, but at that point, we were kind of didn't realise what a big deal. It yeah, was that's what be. I was going to say. Did you ever imagine when you first got the job, when you first started, that it would turn into what it is now, no. being this like iconic TV show of Britain? Yeah, Did you ever no, think? No, absolutely not. I mean, twelve-year-old me wouldn't. Would, yeah, she would be flabbergasted if she said, "Oh yeah." <laughs> oh, by the way, at thirty-three, you're still going to be playing this character. By the way. Um, I wouldn't have believed you because it was just like a tiny little program. It was, I think the episodes to begin with were like 15 minutes long or something and it was mm. straight after school. So I was like, well, no one's going to watch well, that. Also, it was a really different subject matter. No one had ever made a program about like the care system in this no. country ever. So I think maybe it was unexpected that people took to it so much? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we were all massive Jacqueline Wilson fans, so from that point of view, you know, we thought, oh, maybe a few people mm. who'd read the book might be interested. But yeah, as you say, we were kind of used to, like, the Chuckle Brothers, mm. who I love, by the way, <laughs> but it was a lot of, like, male-led kind of slapstick comedy, yeah. that kind of stuff. So there wasn't really many dramas. Especially with children. Especially with children, yeah, because yeah, you kind of had the Grain Chills and the Biker Groves, which were a bit more for, like, the all the cool kids <laughs> um, and then yeah we came along with this program that was actually about something and I think I mean that's obviously why it was so successful mm -hmm. I think in the end because yeah we were making a program that actually kind of matters do you remember a specific moment where you knew it had gone wild like was there a day or a moment where you knew right this is a really big thing now yeah, I remember being at, like, I think it was, like, a CBBC concert or something like that, and I'd been backstage and I was being interviewed, and I think, like, S Club 7 were performing <laughs> or something like that, and I really wanted to go and watch them. I don't think it was S Club 7. <laughs> I don't know who it was. I don't think I ever listened to S Club 7, so I don't know why I said that. But some band were about to perform, and I really wanted to watch them. So my mum was like, come on, we'll, we'll go and watch in the audience. And I basically stepped out and into the crowd and everyone, it felt like, looked and just stampeded towards <gasps> me. It was the weirdest moment I've ever experienced to the point where I had to almost be, like, lifted up by, like, a bodyguard and just put backstage again. So I think How old were you? And I must happened? have been about 13, so wow. it was absolutely terrifying. And that was your first experience of that kind of thing? Yeah, and wow. it, was, yeah it, was, it was a lot. So I think then I was like, oh, gosh, yeah, people are definitely watching this now. <laughs> OK. And I never did get to see that band. Oh. There's not many actors who can say that they've had such a long withstanding role, which is obviously a really unique experience that mm. you've had. What do you think have been the biggest takeaways from having this recurring part for so long and be such a big part of your life? Yeah, I think quite a lot as, as like actors, it's kind of almost frowned upon to be playing the same character for so long. 
Um, obviously, you kind of get the the usual kind of soap actors, I mm-hmm. guess, are kind of the only ones that really play the same role for so long. But I kind of look at it as a great thing because I've sort of come and gone. I've been able to go away, do my own thing, do other projects, and then come back to this character that I absolutely love and find out what she's doing next mm. and where her journey's taken her. Because I'm invested as much as the audience yeah, are. Like, I bet you are. I am desperate to know what happens to Tracy <laughs> next. I'm like, what's <laughs> happening? Is she going to get married? <laughs> like, I just, I have all these questions and I like the fact that we can go back, mm. you know, even if it's like several years later and, mm. and sort of pick up where we left off. Do you think there are any misconceptions, good or bad, about finding fame at an early age? Yeah, I think everyone just assumes that I have taken loads of drugs at some point and ended up in rehab, which I have never done, guys. I'm probably the only child star that has never done any of those things. Well done. I am squeaky clean. I'm proud of it. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think it's, well, it's so different, isn't it, now to when I was growing up. Social mm. media wasn't around. It wasn't a thing. Because I don't know how I would have coped. Because mm. I get like really weird trolling messages, as does everyone, all the time. And it's draining. Yeah. And I'm 33. So I don't know what my younger self would have been like. No. I probably would have quit and just. Mm. Not I think bothered. it must be really hard for the people who are up and coming now. Absolutely. To see hate all the time and have to deal with that yeah. all the time. You look the same. I do. I haven't aged. No, I think CBC was that like? actually kept me in a freezer. I went through a stage, which I'm sure you'll all probably remember, where I straightened my hair for a really long time and thought mm-hmm. that would work. Um, <laughs> and it didn't because I still have my face. Do you know what? I really like it. I'm really lucky. I kind of remind everyone of their childhood, right? Mm-hmm. So it's that nice feeling of nostalgia. So I just get love all mm. the time. Like no one's ever horrible to me because I remind them of when they were young, which is a nice feeling to have. So the original Tracy Beaker has evolved so much. We've had mm. my mum, Tracy Beaker, the Beaker girls, and then other ones that you weren't involved with, like mm-hmm. the dumping ground. Yeah. And we've had Tracy Beaker returns. There've been so many iterations. What do you think has been the best part of watching the original series evolve into what it is now? It's just crazy. It's um, almost like we've created like a little universe, which is quite nice, uh, especially the dumping ground, which is the one I'm not involved in, mm-hmm. weirdly. Um, I think that's actually been running the longest out of all of them. Wow. So that's really cool to see um, because it sort of came off the back of Tracy Beaker Returns, which I was really happy with because the kids in Tracy Beaker Returns were insane. Mm. Like, they were so brilliant. I mean, all of them are now basically in Hollywood. Like, that's so good. So to be able for them to, like, carry on the name of it and and now it's just evolved so much and, like, new kids are coming and going, it's just it's such a cool thing to see. Mm. And it's sort of just kick-starting all these careers off, which is which is great. We're filming at the Danny Harmer Academy. We are! We're oh. filming here. Yay. What inspired you to create your own space within the performing arts? I just wanted to give something back to my community, really. There's not really a lot of stuff for kids to do where I live so Mm. I live in Berkshire um, and basically your options are to hang outside the co-op or go and drink some cider on a park bench (laughs) so I kind of wanted to just create a nice safe space where kids could come and just be themselves with schools uh, and the budget cuts like performing arts is the first thing to get rid of so Mm -hmm. we literally don't really have anything around here they can either do it as a hobby or a confidence building thing or if they want to you know, take it on as a career, I will try and help and guide them as much as I can. What advice do you have for, like, the kids at your academy, young, aspiring actors? What what advice do you give people that want to pursue the same kind of career that you did when you were younger? Don't do it. Go and be a lawyer. Really? Go and get a proper job. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm always, like, super honest. It is so hard. This industry is cutthroat, and it can be brutal sometimes. But it's also great and glorious and you get so much out of it and it's so much fun. And um, yeah, if you want to take it as a career, I will always try and, you know, guide as best I can. But it's kind of down to you as a person and how much you put in is what you're going to get out of Mm -hmm. it in the end. But you've just got to have really thick skin, I think, more than anything to be in this industry. Um, It can be. It can be harsh. As a mum... How would you feel if your children wanted to get into the industry? Because when I started, my mum was an actress prior to the career she has now. She really didn't want me to do it. No, exactly. Would you feel the same? I'm like, oh. I'd give them other options. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I look, if that's really what my kids wanted to do, of course I would back them 100%. But 
but I would be so super honest about yeah. all of my experiences. That's what my mum was like. Which would hopefully put them off. And yeah. then if it doesn't, then they're ready, aren't mm-hmm. they? So, yeah, I guess um, so. Yeah, we'll okay. just have to wait and see. I mean, my little one's only seven months, so we've got, we've got oh, a while. Oh, got a while. Yeah, I've got well, Some parents do start them, yeah. I know. <laughs> Obviously, because of all the success you've had, you've been able to do loads of other exciting things, like Strictly, you've done campaigns for PETA, you've been on Mastermind. What do you think your favourite project or favourite thing you've been able to do because of the platform that you have has been so far? Oh gosh, I've done so many weird things and so much fun things. I think Strictly for me, Mm -hmm. because that was like a goal. I mean, we all want to do Strictly. We want to wear the dresses. (laughs) Mm -hmm. We want to be fake tanned. We want to smell like biscuits. We want (laughs) to dance with handsome men. Do they all smell like biscuits? Oh, we stank, honestly. Why biscuits? That's what fake tan smells like, isn't it? Like old biscuits. Oh yeah, kind of. Yeah, (laughs) or like cat wee. That's what we all smell Mm. like. Mm, Delish. I also, I don't like to brag about this, but I did win Come Dine With Me which was really important. Like <laughs> well it, was, done. it was such a big highlight, okay? I don't like to go on, but yes, I won Come Dine With Me. That is a really big achievement. It kind of is. If you lost, have you seen that clip of that guy who's like... What does he say? You know that guy? Oh, Jane. Would, if you'd lost, would you have had the Absolutely, same reaction? Absolutely, I would have thrown the, the money and gone, get out of my what house. What did you cook? A spaghetti bolognese. Oh, wow. But I tell you, the trick is to just get everyone drunk. Any secrets of Tracy Beaker that you think mm. people don't know but would want to know? Oh, secrets. Well, I do get asked all the time if I ate the worm. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't eat the worm, guys, because I think the BBC could have been done for child abuse, mm-hmm. and it's cruel, and you shouldn't eat worms. No. That's disgusting. Um, it was a bit of licorice. Oh. So that's my most asked question, actually. Really? Out yeah. of everything? Out of everything that I've done in my entire career. Did but you no, eat the worm? Did you eat the worm? Did you eat the worm? No! My final question for you, Danny, is... How does it feel to be Trace Speaker? What it, does that feel like? It feels pretty awesome. Yeah, I love her. I think she's just one of the best characters I've ever played in my life because you never know quite what you're getting. And I just love the fact that the whole kind of nation has sort of just embraced this character and, and they're all desperate to see what she does next. And I'm exactly the same. So, yeah, who knows? My grand Tracy Beaker. <laughs> should be one it, it will be in That's the future great. i'm sure can i can i have a cameo absolutely of course Thanks. you can of course brilliant could be my bingo friend yeah but i don't speak so that'd be kind of oh yeah you didn't did you because i wouldn't I could uh, just hold the numbers yeah <laughs> i forgot you were mute yeah i didn't <laughs> Darling, put down the geek bar, please call you ain't taken the free bar. My name's Bill High, it's nice to meet ya. It's all going well and then it gets deeper. She wants to know when can I next see her? Eager, now you can't, I'm John Cena. Tears in her eyes, she says it's hay fever. Yeah, whatever you say, Tracy Beaker. <laughs>